Air is compressed steadily by a 5 kilowatt compressor from 100 kilopascals and 17 degrees Celsius to 600 kilopascals and 167 degrees Celsius at a rate of 1.6 kilograms per minute. During this process, some heat transfer takes place between the compressor and the surrounding medium at 17 degrees Celsius. Determine the rate of entropy change of air during this process. All right, so let's start with our problem setup. So we have a compressor. So I'm going to draw a compressor. And so we have air coming in, air going out. There's going to be work input. And we have, so let's just start writing down some information. So first of all, it gave us the uh, P1. So the air is being compressed from 100 kilopascals and 17 degrees C to 600 kilopascals and 167 degrees C. So we know that P1 is equal to 100 kilopascals and T1 is equal to 17 degrees Celsius. And then P2 is 600 kilopascals and T2 is 167 degrees Celsius. And then it also tells us that it's a 5 kilowatt compressor. So we know that the work in is equal to minus 5 kilowatts. And the reason why it's minus is because it's work in. And then it also gave us the mass flow rate. So the mass flow rate of the air is 1.6 kilograms per minute. And we want to just right away convert this to kil kilograms per second. So one minute over 60 seconds. So then the mass flow rate is equal to 0 0.0267 kilograms per second. And then one thing that we're going to assume with this is that this compressor is operating and steady at steady flow, which basically means it's not in startup or shutdown phase. So then we know that M, so the mass flow rate in is equal to the mass flow rate out, is just equal to the mass flow rate. So this is steady flow. And then what we're looking for is the entropy change of the air. So we're looking for the entropy change of the air. All right, so I think, oh, and then our temperature surrounding. So it gave us the temperature surrounding of 17 degrees Celsius, and we know that there's some Q out, but it doesn't tell us how much Q is out. It just says Q. The, so it says, during this process, some heat transfer takes place between the compressor and the surroundings. So we know there's some heat out, and we know the temperature of the surroundings. All right, so let's make some assumptions. Um, first of all, we already said this, but we're assuming that this is steady flow. And we're also going to assume that the change in potential energy is zero because this compressor probably isn't really tall. And we're also, it, it doesn't give us any velocity data for the air going in or out. So we really can't calculate a change in kinetic energy even if there is one. So we're just going to assume that it's zero. And we also want to think about like, so we have air and is this air ideal? Like, is this an ideal gas? So let's, um, let's think about that. So is the air ideal? So if we look up the critical temperature and pressure for um, air, the critical pressure is 3.77 megapascal, and the critical temperature is minus 140.5 degrees Celsius. So if we look at our pressure and our temperatures, so our pressure is really low compared to the critical pressure. 
and our temperature is really high compared to the critical temperature. So we can say that this is ideal. So we want to say this is an ideal gas. And then what we're going to do is, since we have air and we do have an air table, we can either use data from the air table or we can assume a constant specific heat. So what I'm going to do is actually solve this both ways so that you can see how um, this can be solved with data from the air table or it can be solved with um, just uh, using specific heats. But first, let's write down our equations. So we're looking for the change in um, entropy of the air. And since we assume that this is ideal gas, we can, well, so we're going to use, let's start with this equation. So um, C sub P dt over T minus R natural log P2 over P1. So we're assuming ideal gas, so we can use this equation. And we're also using the form of the equation with the pressures because we're given pressures and not volumes. So we want to use the pressure. And so we can solve this one of two ways. We can either use data from the air table or we can assume constant specific heat. So I want to make sure that this is either or, like you can either do one or the other. So I'm going to start with use... Um, data from air table. So if we do that, then the change in entropy of the air is equal to S2 minus S1, and we would look those up on the air table, minus R natural log P2 over P1. Or we can assume constant specific heat, and then we can use this equation. So, and this is really just, um, if we use data from the air table, we're just replacing this, so we're just using the S function. Or if we assume constant specific heat, then we're actually integrating that, because we can pull the specific heat out, and then we're using this, so CP natural log T2 over T1 minus R natural log P2 over P1. All right, so now let's get our data. And I just want to emphasize we can do either or, like you're going to get the same answer using both of these methods. So let's start with... Um, air table data. So at the inlet, we know that P1 is 100 kilopascals and T1 is 17 degrees Celsius, which is 290 Kelvin. And so from this, S1 is equal to 1.66802 kilojoules, keep this a little bit separate, kilojoules, kilogram, Kelvin. And then at the outlet, um, so T2 is 440 Kelvin, and P2 is 600 kilopascals, so S2 is 2.08870 kilojoules kilogram Kelvin. All right, so this is our data if we want to use the air table. If we want to use specific heat, then we just need to look up the specific heat at the average temperature, so T average is equal to 290 plus 440 divided by 2, which is 365 Kelvin. 
And so, and then CISA P average at 365 Kelvin is equal to 1.0095. So now it's just, so now we have all of our data. Now it's just a matter of plugging our data into our equations and solving. So I'm going to continue. Um, I'll start with the air table. So delta S. So the change in entropy of the air, and I'll just rewrite the equation. It's 2 minus S1 minus R natural log P2 over P1. So this is just equal to 2.0. 0.8870 kilojoules kilogram Kelvin minus 1.66802 kilojoules kilogram gram Kelvin minus and then make sure to get oh minus um, and then this is R so gas constant so 0. 2870 kilojoules kilogram Kelvin multiplied by the natural log of P2 over P1. So kilo, 600 kilopascals over 100 kilopascals. And so then this works out to 0.8 Minus 0 0.0936 kilojoules kilogram Kelvin. And then we can multiply this by the mass flow rate. So delta S air is equal to M dot multiplied by delta S air. And so then this is equal to 0. 0267 kilograms per second multiplied by negative 0 0.0267 kilojoules kilogram Kelvin. So kilograms cancel. And then this just works out to, so delta S air is equal to minus 0. 0025 kilojoules Kelvin second. All right, so that's using the air table. Now let's go back and redo this with the specific heats. So with the specific heats, um, delta S air, and I'm just going to put the, I'm just going to multiply this equation by the mass flow rate right away this time. So CP natural log. T2 over T1 minus R natural log P2 over P1. So then this equals 0 0.0267 kilograms per second multiplied by um, C sub P was 1.0095. Um, and this is kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin, and then that's multiplied by the natural log of T2 over T1, so 440 Kelvin over 290 Kelvin, minus, I'm sorry, this is kind of going on to multiple lines, but 0 0.2870 kilojoules kilogram Kelvin, Natural log, 600 kilopascals over 100 kilopascals. And then delta, so then if we just solve all of that, delta S air is equal to minus 0 0.0025 kilojoules Kelvin second. So we basically get the same thing. Um, so the easier way to do this is by assuming the 
um, constant specific heat. So that's actually how I recommend solving these. But if you want to use the air table, you can.